Hello, everyone. It is Thursday, April 16th, and also National Wear Your Pajamas to Work Day. Um, I'm going to place the bets that some of our viewers are already celebrating that one. Um, I am Jen Stone, of course, and I'm going to give you all a quick orientation of the webinar tool itself before I introduce our guest today. Um, you're muted automatically, but that doesn't mean we want to be the only ones doing the talking. Uh, you all have access to the live chat where you can send a message or questions to the whole group. If you're having trouble viewing uh, the presentation or with audio, feel free to check that box to send privately. Um, feel free to chat in your questions at any time during the presentation. If we don't answer in real time, we'll make sure to cover it during our Q&A um, at the end of the presentation. Also, the recording of the webinar will be sent to you after we wrap up the live event today. So if you missed anything, if you want to share it with a friend, you'll be able to do that. Um, you'll also receive a video link in the email that um, goes out after the presentation with more information on today's, um, today's topic. Be sure to check that out. All right, so now I'd like to introduce our guest today, uh, Maddie Carr Farrell um, from Culture Stone. She is going to be showing us Culture Stone's new 2020 profiles, along with some of um, the new Farrell brand ex extensions. Maddie, it's so great to have you with us today. Yeah, thank you. And um, so, yeah, on the pajama day, unfortunately, I'm not <laughs> wearing pajamas at the top half. Um, I did have a, a presentation with our our boral group, so I had to dress a little professional. But I am wearing leggings, though. Oh, very nice. <laughs> yeah, I like to be a professional up here and then, yeah, sweatpants below. So, you know, we're all here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, today for my snack, I don't know about you, Maddie, but I have, um, I kept it classy with the cheese plates and I have some tea that I'm enjoying. So, yeah. So, yeah, my snacks, um, as I mentioned, I am snackless at the moment. I do have Fred Meyers delivering all my groceries tomorrow uh, between four and five. So um, my future snack will be pretzel chips and hummus. But right now, if you look at my fridge, it's pretty sad. <laughs> Quarantine times are hard. I get it. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Anyway, well, tell us about, um, do you want to give us a little background on yourself? And then yeah. Um, so background about me. Um, I've been with Boral Stone Division for almost seven years now. Uh, I've been selling the Cultured Stone line throughout those seven years. Um, I have now been announced to be a temporary rep as, uh, for the El Dorado Stone. Is two, so I have the Cultured Stone, the El Dorado Stone. Um, I've been in the building industry for 14 years. I graduated with my interior design degree from Oregon State University, um, so that was exciting times. And um, been a true Oregonian at heart, even though if you find my phone number, it's a 206. Uh, it's because I lived up in Seattle for seven years, and I've been living in the Portland area for three years now. Awesome. Very cool. And it looks like you've got a couple of cute little office mates on this first slide here. I do. <laughs> I would introduce you to them. Uh, the dog is sleeping down below. Her name is Sydney. She is 11 years old, but she looks like a permanent puppy, still has full of energy. Um, and then the most recent addition, it's a, I rescued him, Figaro. He is a tuxedo kitty. Um, he's lounging up on the sun on top of the sofa over there. Um, but yeah, they have uh, quite the relationship, literally um, chasing each other around. They cuddle, they fight. Um, it's an interesting dynamic between the two. <laughs> well, they're pretty cute. Yes, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> they're a handful right now. <laughs> Awesome. Um, well, cool. Well, like, do you want to kind of just lunch away and tell us what you got? And yeah, definitely. Cool. Um, so we came out with twelve brand new profiles for the Cultured Stone line. Um, started mid two thousand nineteen, end of two thousand nineteen, and then early twenty twenty. Right here on this first page, you're seeing the six out of twelve. 
Um, so to kind of explain them, our hewn stone, which is at the top left, and I have a physical sample here I'll show so you can kind of see a little bit more of that texture. So the hewn stone is how I like to explain it as a transitional. It has traditional and modern styles to it, so it really blends nicely with any design that you're working on. Perfect for interior or exterior walls. Um, the hewn stone comes in five different sizes, and I'll pull the chart out. So they come in a three by eight, three by 14, five by 14, five by 22, or you could get as large as an eight by 22, and they do come with corners as well. So a really fun style, you can get really um, uh, detailed with different patterns with those different sizes. So next up is the handmade brick canvas. I don't have an actual sample board to show you. Uh, I had to give that away just yesterday to a designer, um, but it is bright white. I don't know if you guys can kind of see the texture on it really well, um, but it looks like someone has taken a bead blaster and just blasted the face of this brick and then took that brick and threw it in a tumbler and just tumbled it. So it is really weathered. It really um, has a lot of wrinkles, cracks, crevices on it. So it gives it that super aged look. I really like it for the industrial. How I explain it to people, um, the painted brick is really popular right now. So it is a white brick without having to be painted because it looks like it's already been painted. Um, but beautiful for exterior and interior as well. Nice, quick question about that one. Um, how did the white colors do in the weather here in Portland? They do well. So they do well. We do recommend, though, to put a uh, water repellent on it. So that'll help the beauty of it. Um, it also helps with cleaning it, too. So if you are going to use a water repellent, please use a breathable silane or siloxane based water repellent. Nothing with oil in it. Oil based um, sealers, they do trap in moisture, which can eat. Um, to happen to get efflorescence, um, spalling, so a lot of issues happen with that. And it also voids our warranty too. So a breathable silane or siloxane based. Good to know. Is that something that designers should include in their spec? Yes, that would be a wise thing to include into the spec. So that way the mason knows that um, a sealer is wanted uh, or needed to be on that stone. Otherwise, most of the time, the Masons won't add it unless um, being told to do so. Cool, good to know. Yeah. Um, so next up, we have the canvas, handmade brick. I don't know if you can see that texture there. Um, but the color of it, it's a little bit more, looks like a gray staining to it. Also sticking pretty light. Um, with uh, our tones, so great for interior, exterior. Again, the, the texture on the face of it is really um, roughed up and weathered and aged. Um, so again, it adds to that industrial look. And then um, another one that isn't on here, but I really want to show is our textured cast fit. As you see here, it has um, more of that plaster-like look and feel to the face of it. Um, the textured cast fit comes in an 8 by or 12 by 24, and it does come with corners, so really large uh, format pieces. For these large format pieces, I do encourage using a particular type of mortar, so we recommend using a polymer modified mortar for that type of application. It just has a more heavy-duty bond strength, um, than your type S mortar would. So, um, is there any other questions on that? Actually, yeah. Um, do cultured stone products have a sustainability advantage? They do. It's pretty awesome. Um, so we use an average of 58% recycled content, and that's pre-consumer. So any of our products, we do a daily uh, QC check um, at our manufacturing plant in Napa, California. Um, and if any products just look a little off in color and texture, 
what they'll do is they'll completely abolish that product by re-grinding it down into a fine material and then adding that back into our batch mix ingredients to make our product. Uh, at our Napa plant, we also uh, use a closed loop water system to facilitate water throughout the plant so we're not wasting any water. And then we have large basins that collect rainwater that is cycled through that closed loop water system too. Uh, we also use um, local resource materials for our batch mix ingredients. For instance, our pumice, um, we, have, uh, we get from Idaho. So we have a manufacturing plant in Napa, California. And then we have another, our second uh, manufacturing plant is in Chester, South Carolina. So all made in the US, one on the West Coast, one on the East Coast. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, cool. Um, so next up, we have our wonderful carbon uh, cast bit. This carbon cast bit, as you see here, is really a smooth, um, like CMU block, but not as thick as a CMU block. Again, recommend using a polymer modified mortar for that application. Um, if you need recommendations on the type of mortars, let me know. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Laticrete, they're a great product, um, so they would be a good additive for that. Um, those cast fit sizes come in an 8 by 16 and 12 by 24. So you have those flats and then you have corners with them too. Next up is our carbon. So again, we're loving those dark grays, charcoals. So the carbon handmade brick. Again, same style of texture, heavy texture and cracks and crevices and wrinkles on the face to look very aged and weathered. And these um, handmade brick pieces, which I didn't say the sizes. So the handmade brick pieces come um, in heights two and two and three quarters and the lengths are eight and three sixteenths. So very precise on that one. And then lastly, we have the beautiful sculpted ashlar. This is um, our Echo Ridge sculpted ashlar. Individual pieces you see here, um, really soft, tumbled feel to it. Um, but the colors, uh, the Echo Ridge is our number one seller across the US, um, even internationally. Because um, you see here, it just has these beautiful heathered grays, the steel blues and more of those neutral browns. And it has some soft, which I can't see too well, but really soft um, touches of gold throughout. So you have your warm and cool tones in it. Those are gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, Ren has a quick question. Oh, yeah. um, how do you install stone veneers? Do they go over the gypsum or do they need a backer of some sort? And how would they detail it for exterior? Yeah, so the installation, or if you want me to go ahead and flip ahead to the installation slide, and we can come back to the other ones. Yeah. Uh, so here you it's kind of showing some actual install photos. Um, you see the photo on the left hand side, that is a large multifamily job with our cast fit. Um, product line, so they're using the large 12 by 24s. That's going over wood sheathing. So you can use any sort of wood sheathing for that. Um, so Egyptian, um, uh, oh my gosh, backer board, mm -hmm. any sort of wood sheathing. But over that, you need to have your two layers of weather resistant barrier um, sheets over that. So you could have a minimum of a 15 pound household felt wrap or the Tyvek, the standard Tyvek paper. And we have um, some great charts on our website um, that kind of discuss uh, the installation process and the ASTM standards for the WRBs and the mortars. Um, you could also install uh, MSV over, as you see on the right hand side, it's being installed over a CMU block. So you could install it over CMU, you could install it over brick. You just need to make sure uh, before you apply that mortar that the wall is completely clean. So it's not painted. It doesn't have any um, previous sealers on it. Um, if it's brand new, then you could apply that mortar straight on top of it. If it has been painted or sealed, there's other um, steps that you have to take before applying that mortar. Awesome. Um, cool. And then we also have our WRB applications as well, uh, which is something I was gonna touch on. 
um, which I guess I can do right now. Uh, let's see, I think there's a slide on here that shows um, our WRB. Oops, did I go too far? I went too far. Um, so we have a new rain screen system. It's called the Boral Drain and Dry Lath. Um, it comes with a rain screen and attached to it is a fiberglass lath. And it sticks 3 eighths of an inch from a wall. It comes in a large roll, super easy, but you just apply your mortar on top of this and then your mortared stone on top of that. So super easy install. Uh, no metal lath is needed because we have this fiberglass lath to it. Cool. It's great. I kind of jumped ahead on that one. <laughs> Backstepping. I don't know if you want me just to explain what's in these photos. Uh, yeah, that'd be great. Or like if there's any other kind of unique features that you wanted to make sure you touched on. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so in these photos on the right hand side um, is our carbon cast fit that's in the smaller size, the eight by 16 or the left hand side photo. And then the right hand side photo is our textured cast fit. I do apologize. The photo isn't the greatest. It was taken with my cell phone at a trade show, the International Builder Show, and the lighting in there was horrendous. So um, <laughs> that's our textured cast fit. The Stan Hope is the color. Awesome. And then in these photos, um, these are our early uh, 2019 profiles that we came out with. So the left-hand side showing our Gunnison Country Ledge Stone, um, which is just straight black. And then on the right hand side is our Wheaton Country Ledge Stone, uh, which has kind of that off white. It's a little bit more on the dirty gray scale. Um, so those are that. Went over a little bit on the installation. Um, if you want to know more about installation, reach out to me. I'll show you how you can find my contact info on the last page. Um, and lastly, we have our new flex and dry tape. So this is great for any um, soft joints that you need to have around any windows, anywhere on the outside of the home where you're going to be applying a backer rod and then caulking over it or a casing bead and then having to caulk over it. You could just use this flex and dry tape. Doesn't need to be caulked, doesn't need to be painted. Um, and it expands out to five eighths of an inch. And I could always go into more detail later for anyone that's interested. Nice. That's super good to know about. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if anyone is wanting to get any samples of what I've shown um, or see what else is out there, uh, just go to the source website. I've uploaded all our brand new profiles, so everything's updated on um, their page. And then also my contact information is there too. Yeah, and right now I'm sending a link to a video also that uh, Maddie wanted to share with all of you. So check that out if you want more info on what she just showed you. And I'll give you everyone in a minute if there's any other questions. Um, but just a quick reminder that a copy of this recording will be sent to you um, after we wrap up. And that on Monday, we're going to be hosting Todd Johnson with Matter Contracts. So be sure to tune in, um, check that one out. And you can go to our events page at tothesource.com to register for upcoming snack breaks and watch any of the archived videos. All right. Any other questions? Let's see. All right. I think Wait. we're all good. Yeah. Thanks so much, okay. Matt. Great. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate your time and allowing me to speak to the whole group. Yeah, absolutely. All right, everyone have a great weekend. We'll see you on Monday. Happy snacking. All right, bye. Bye.